Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Axon here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you a new effect called Electrify from Universe 4. Now, you might recall that this effect was largely designed by our resident tutorial creator and VFX genius, Hashi. Hello? Harry Frank, it's Hashi. How'd you get this number? This is my personal... Can we make a universe plugin out of this thing I'm sending over? Please, 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 please? Yeah, sure, fine. Awesome. You're the best. Uh, yeah, how, how's the, how's the family? They're asleep, Hashi. It's like 3.30 in the morning. Always what? good catching up, man. So I thought I'd try the same thing, calling him at 3 in the morning with the news that the new plugin's about to release. Let's give this a try. Got his number right here. Doing up, it's like three in the. Oh, Harry, Harry, just the person I wanted to talk to. I've got this great idea for a new plugin. Uh, we start with some inverted fractal noise. Huh. Uh, we must have gotten disconnected. Well, as I was saying, Electrify is a stylization effect that adds electricity to your footage. So I'd like to open up After Effects and show you how this works. I'll start with this footage here and apply some electricity to this downhill racer. So I'll grab my footage and drop this into a new composition and I'll apply Electrify by going to my Stylize Effects under Universe and applying Electrify. Now let me briefly describe the image process that Electrify uses and this will help you understand the different parameters in here. Now, the noise source right here that we're using to generate the electricity varies. We can use fractal noise, which essentially uses a fractal noise generator and is not responsive to the image. Or we can use image contours. And this follows the contrasting areas of the image, but it goes a little deeper than that. I'm going to turn off Electrify real quick and apply an effect called Colorama here in After Effects. If I go to the output cycle and set this to a ramp gray, and I go to the input phase, and I start changing this phase shift, we'll see that Colorama shifts the image from the brightest areas to the darkest areas and then wraps around. And that's because it's using this mode called wrap. Now, Electrify is doing something very similar. So it is shifting the image from these brighter areas to the darker areas. And as you can see, there's a moment where this contrasting edge shifts through the image. So we not only have contrasting edges from the source image, we have contrasting edges from shifting the luminance of the image. And that's exactly what Electrify is doing when we use image contours. It's using those edges, but it's also shifting the entire image from the brighter areas to the darker areas. And as I play through this, you'll see this sort of sweeping through the sky, starting at the brighter areas of the sky and kind of moving across to darker areas. And then as we progress forward in time, it moves to even darker areas. And then the racer is actually kind of the darkest area of the image, and it kind of sweeps through that area as well. Now, the speed at which it shifts from the lighter areas to the darker areas is controlled by this evolution speed. We can also manually offset this by using the evolution offset. Brightness is pretty straightforward. It's an overall brightness of those edges that we're rendering. Distortion is using a fractal noise distortion. So if I turn this all the way to zero, we'll see the lines without any distortion. Let me park this in a spot where we can see some pretty solid lines. So we can see that we're really just drawing an edge around those contrasting areas. And you can also see the edge created by shifting the luminance of the image. The distortion is using a fractal noise source to distort the image. Fractal noise is layers of noise, starting with large layers of noise and getting increasingly smaller as we overlay them on top of each other. So often referred to as octaves or complexity of the noise, the distortion octaves really refer to how complex the noise is. So let me park it on a spot here and let's turn up the distortion. If I turn the octaves down, we'll see that the 
noise is much less complex. And if I turn this up, we'll see it getting increasingly complex. The distortion influence is how much influence is taking from the lower or larger layers of noise or how much influence is taking from the smaller, more complex layers of noise. Distortion scale is a standard fractal noise scale. Fractal noise tends to get smaller or more compact with larger values, and the fractal noise image tends to get a lot larger with lower scale values. Now below these evolution settings is the blend mode, and that might look pretty straightforward. What I want to point out is that the effect itself is rendering over black. So if I set the blend mode to none, we'll see that everything renders over black. But I also want to point out that your blend mode works in conjunction with a couple of checkboxes down at the bottom. Now this isn't as useful on footage as it is on text or logos. During the development of Electrify, I noticed that certain blend modes like hard light looked quite interesting with the black version of it. So when we render the electrical effect over black, if we use something like hard light that gives it kind of that darkening effect, that would kind of go away if we were using unmalt. So that's why I have the option to kind of turn that on or off. So with unmalt on, we see a lot of the original through it. Hard light with the unmalt option off has a darker kind of feel to it. Now, if we didn't have the option to mat the source alpha, all of this would be over sort of a dark image. So that's why we have the option to mat the source alpha in addition to the unmalt and the blend mode. Next, I'd like to talk about the mask settings and the matte settings and what the difference is between these two sections. A mask is simply an area that we're using to limit the effect. So this can be a rectangular area or an elliptical area. And all we're doing is just limiting the effect to render within that area. Now, the cool thing about using image contours is that because they are so localized to the image itself, a very simple mask like this can actually go pretty far to kind of isolate the effect to a very specific area. So in this case, I might only need to do a few keyframes to kind of keep this effect connected to where my eraser is. Although I might need to animate the width and height a little bit over time because the camera gets a little further and a little closer during the duration of the shot. So I'll turn this up here and then looks like we probably need to turn it back down as the camera gets a little farther away. So all the mask is, is a very basic elliptical or rectangular mask to limit the area of the effect. Now, jumping up to the matte settings versus the mask settings, the matte settings primarily generate an image that is used to generate a shimmering effect for Electrify. To do this, we're rendering fractal noise and applying it to the alpha or transparency of the the effect itself. Let me show you what the matte itself looks like. So it's just basic 2D noise like this. We've got dark areas and light areas. It's pretty contrasty and it is scrolling from the bottom to top. We take this image and we apply it as a matte to our electrify lines. And it makes it a lot more interesting. I can show you what this looks like without it by simply setting it to none. So if I set this to none, we just see kind of these contiguous lines that aren't very interesting. And if I turn on fractal noise, we can see that we have sort of breaks in the electrical effect and it makes it a lot more interesting. Now, when we are using fractal noise for the mat, we have pretty standard fractal noise controls in the mat settings. So the overall brightness of the mat, contrast, scale. Let me zoom, get to a part where this is a little bit closer. The overall scale of the noise, the rotation of the noise, that kind of thing. And again, if I isolate it, you can see what it looks like. 
So we're just affecting this two-dimensional image that's being used to make our effect a lot more shimmery. Now I'll come back to using image contours as a source because I don't think it works really well using the source as image contours as well as the matte settings as image contours. So I'll come back to this. And let's talk about using the noise source as fractal noise. Now there is nothing that has the fractal noise automatically respond to the image itself. So it, it really is just rendering fractal noise. And it's up to us to make it do something slightly more interesting than just render as lines over our image. So once we enable fractal noise, you'll see in our fractal noise settings right here, they go from grayed out to now they are enabled. And I have control over the fractal noise, scale, contrast, all that kind of stuff. Now for this shot, I would suggest adding a lot of scroll. So I can have this scroll very quickly from top to bottom to give it that kind of feeling of movement. And it's only going top to bottom. I will combine both the X and Y to kind of give it a bit more of some motion like that. Looks like our mask kind of drifts right there. Now, as well as the image contours and the mask settings work well together, fractal noise isn't as forgiving because we're really just rendering kind of an area of fractal noise and there's really no general awareness of how this will stick to the image. However, if you remember in our matte settings, we also have the ability to use image contours as a matte. Now, this looks a little horrendous with the current brightness settings but I'll use the image contours as a mat to apply to a fractal noise source. And again, I'll show you exactly what the image contours source looks like. I can just set the uh, view mat source while I've got image contours here. And now this is what's being applied as the mat. So we can render a fractal noise source and mat it using image contours or we can also render image contours and render fractal noise as the map. You might notice that we also have the option to both combine noise and image contours into one effect. And this was really just from trial and error that I often wanted to use both. So why not use both? So we have the option to use noise plus image contours. And really all that is is it technically should say fractal noise and image contours combined, but there just aren't enough characters there. So noise plus image contours is both of these effects rendered at the same time. In the example that I showed right here, instead of using the mask, I actually put the effect in a separate layer. And this is why we've got the blend mode right here. This is actually very useful for allowing you to render the effect on its own and then blend it separately. So let me show you how I did that. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I've got one with the effect and one without the effect. I'll move the, the one without the effect to the lower layer. So we've just got a plain version of it there. And then I've got the effect rendering right here. And I'll turn off the effect for right now. Here in After Effects, I can do a very quick roto bezier of this, uh, this racer here. So I'm just going to use the pen tool. I'm using roto bezier because this is going to make for a very easy to draw mask shape. And I highly recommend separating body from limb when you are drawing shapes like this because you're just never going to get a good track if you're trying to track an arm and a body at the same time. So once I've drawn that mask, I can simply go to my tracker. And if I play this backward, I can get a pretty quick and reasonably good track of that mask, mostly isolating to where the body is. There we go. 
and I would need to track it forward from this part right here because I started it about two thirds of the way into the clip. There we go. And then same for the arm. I can just do this real quick. There we go. And I'll turn the effect back on. And what I'm going to do is change the blend mode from screen to none. And this is going to render it just on black. And then what I can do for my layer is set this to a screen blend mode and blend that back with the original clip. Let's jump to a different example. So let's say we want to use this effect on some text. So I've got some white text here and I'll go to stylize and apply electrify. Because we're using a screen blend mode and starting with some fairly light colors like these light blues here, and I apply this to white text, we're essentially blending light colors over white with screen, which tends to make things brighter anyway. In short, if you're using white text like this, you're not really going to see a huge result. If you want to use it as a text effect, you're going to want to use probably some darker text. Also, you're probably not going to want to use image contours, especially if you're using very plain text like this, because it's a solid text. There really aren't a whole lot of image contours to take from because there aren't any image contours. So in this case, I might use something like fractal noise. The example I showed here used another effect from Universe called Luster. So if I apply Luster from my Stylize section and move it upstream from Electrify, so it's rendering before the effect, we get a really nice shiny reflective surface with a cool electrical effect on top. Let's use something other than blue because all the examples I've produced so far have been using blue. So let's use some electric orange and yellow. Turn up the brightness. One last setting I've not shown you is using the alpha outline selection in the noise source. And this is strictly designed for using images that have alpha channels such as text or logos. And it looks at the alpha edges rather than the image contours or generates fractal noise. I'll set the blend mode to none so we can just see the effect itself. I'll set the distortion all down to zero. And if we play with the matte brightness and contrast settings here, we can get some really interesting effects. I'm also going to lower the brightness a little bit so we can just kind of get some subtle edge effects on our text. I'll even lower the matte scale of the fractal noise so we get a very loose flowing fractal noise here. I'll set the evolution speed to zero and instead of having it scroll along the Y, I'll have it scroll horizontally along the X axis. And I'll set the blend mode back to screen. Now I'll turn the distortion up just a little bit. And as I play forward, we'll see that we have a really cool electrical effect that is based on the alpha channel of the image rather than the edges or the fractal noise generator. So that's a basic overview of Electrify from Universe 4. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.